Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Katie. Hello and welcome. So the other day I was just browsing around the Urban Outfitters website under the home section and they had some really cute things in the new arrivals. So I thought let's DIY them. So I've got three projects that are really easy but they look so good. I think you guys are gonna love them. As always, I'm going to link all the materials that I use down in the description box if you wanna recreate them for yourself. So let's get started. So the first thing that I wanted to make is this really cute planter. It's got three legs and this adorable design on it, the little smiley face and some flowers. So I thought it would be really fun to recreate. So I picked up this air dry clay on Amazon. It's actually a terracotta clay. So I'll link that down below if you wanna try it out, but I think it's really fun. I like the color of it. So mine will be a little bit different than the one on the website, but I really wanted to use this color. So air dry clay is super easy to work with. You just need to roll it out. I used a combination of my hands and my little rolling pin. I'm going to just be using an old cereal bowl for my planter. So whatever you're using, you can wanna put it in the middle and make sure that you're getting the right size for your clay. So basically I just kept rolling it out and making it a little bit bigger so that I know it would cover the entire bowl that I'm gonna be using. If your clay does start to feel a little bit dry or anything, you can just add some water to it and it softens up really quickly and is really easy to work with. So I rolled mine out on wax paper and it did stick to it a little bit, but this is gonna be the bottom. So it's no big deal because nobody will see that. So this is the bowl that I was talking about. I just laid it right on top and then I started to wrap up the edges of my clay over it and then over the top edge. So in hindsight, I wish that I had cut out little sections of the clay before doing this step to make it a little bit easier. And if you wanna see what I'm talking about, I'll link another video that I made where I did something similar and I did cut out sections of the clay and it made it a lot easier to kind of fit around the bowl. So I ended up having a ton of excess here, but it's not a big deal. I just decided to start ripping off sections at a time to make it a little bit easier for me. It was around this point here where I was like, oh no, I have a ton of extra clay here. This is not gonna be good. But as with any DIY, this is the type of stuff that happens. So you just have to go with it. So you can see I had a lot of excess here. It was creating these big folds. So I just started ripping off extra pieces of clay to make it a little bit simpler for me to wrap it around. And you're gonna go back and smooth it all out later. So if this does happen to you, it's really not a big deal because the clay molds really easily. So once I finally got it how I wanted it, slightly, uh, I started to use my fingers to just even out any of the weird wrinkles and folds and edges. And a little tip for working with air dry clay is to have a little bowl of water nearby because then you can use water to smooth out the clay. The water really helps the clay to smooth out. So you can use your fingers or a paintbrush, whatever you wanna do. So when I do these types of projects, I'm not really going for perfection necessarily. I wanna get it as close as possible, but I also sort of like the rustic look when I'm making clay or like pottery type pieces. I like it to look a little bit raw and natural. And I think it's looking pretty good. I got it as smooth as I possibly could. And then the last thing I wanted to do was just take a little knife and sort of cut off some of the pieces on the inside to make that inside edge a little cleaner. But we're gonna be putting a plant in here anyway, so you won't really see it, so this is up to you. All right, now it's time to make the little legs. So I just ripped off some extra pieces of clay and rolled them in my hand to make a cylinder shape. Then I pressed each end of it onto the wax paper to make sure that it would stand up and be flat when I'm finally done with it, when I'm adding it to the little planter. And then of course you'll want to make sure that all of your legs are the same size. So line them up together and compare them and make sure that they're the same size and then smooth them out and let all of this dry overnight. It also helps if you put it in the sun to dry a little bit faster. So you can see the color here is a lot lighter once it's dry, which is really cool. And I lined up my legs beforehand and just made a little mark with a Sharpie so that I knew where I wanted to glue them down. Then I glued them down using some hot glue. You could also use Gorilla Glue or Super Glue for a much stronger hold. And I added two legs in the back and one in the front. And now for drawing the designs, I just used a Sharpie, just a simple Sharpie, to draw the smiley face, which I think is so cute. And then for the paint splatter effect, you could totally use watered down black paint, but I just decided to make it simple for myself and use the Sharpie as well. So I made some darker dots and some lighter dots to kind of mimic that paint splatter effect. 
And this is totally customizable. You can do as little or as much as you want. And then the last step is to draw the flowers. And the thing that I love about the original is that the flowers weren't perfect. So that's great for me. And I just sort of freehanded these designs and used the planter on my phone as a reference. And I think it looks so cute. This next one is this gorgeous planter or vase. I'm gonna be making it into a vase, but I loved the style of it. I thought it was really unique and cool. So I'm using an old candle jar that I just cleaned out. I didn't make it perfect, but that's okay. I'm just gonna be putting, I think like dried florals or greens in this anyway. And then this foam that I got on Amazon for, I think it was about four or $5. And it's just this home improvement foam. So I will link that down below as well. So I started by adding a little bit of hot glue to my jar. You want to let it cool a little bit before you add your foam. I know from experience, it melted the foam a little bit. So just let the glue dry, or you could also use like a super glue or E6000, something that won't be hot. And then I started to wrap it around the jar and I would add a little bit of glue as I went just to get started. Then I just continued wrapping the foam all the way around the jar and I didn't glue it the rest of the way until I got to the top because once you glue it on the bottom and the top, it's going to hold in the middle. So I believe they sell this foam in all different sizes so you could have it be bigger if you wanted to, but I kind of liked the look of this smaller style, but if you wanted to be closer to the original, you could get a bigger width foam. So my jar got a little more narrow at the top, which is totally fine. It changed the look a little bit, but nothing major. So then once I got to the top, I added a bit more hot glue and just glued it right down to the top of the jar. And I noticed that it was sliding up a little bit. So then I added a little bit more glue in between the top layer of foam and the one below it, just to make sure it was nice and secure and wasn't going to slide up. Then I cut off the excess and glued that last little piece down. So now it's time to paint it. So you could use spray paint. I was originally going to do that, but then I thought it would be fun to mix my own paint color. So I decided to use a combination of white, orange, and red and kind of make my own color. It turned out to be sort of a light coral, light terracotta color, um, which I thought was really fun. So the first step is to just get a thin layer over the entire thing because this foam is pretty dark, so it's going to take a few layers of paint to coat it and really make sure that you don't see any of the gray foam underneath. So first I went in and just painted on one full light layer over everything. Once that had dried a little bit, then I went back in and sponged it on with the sponge brush because that really helps to give you full coverage. So once your first layer is down, go back in and just sponge some paint all over it. I did this about two or three times to make sure everything was fully coated. And then the other thing you want to do is take your brush and make sure that you're getting in all the little crevices between each layer of foam. So here's how I mixed it. I did a bit of white, a tiny bit of red and mostly orange. And that's how I came up with this color. The second round was a little bit more orangey I noticed. I kind of wish I added some more white, but like I said, you can just play around with this and have fun with it and create any color that you want. So here I am going back in with another layer of sponging and you can see the coverage is getting really nice now. So then I lastly went in with my sponge brush and sort of dragged it around each of the little crevices between each layer of foam so that I could really get the paint in there so that there wouldn't be any black or gray space showing. Now you can just let it dry and then you can add anything that you want to it. You could do fresh flowers, you could fill this with water or you can do some dried eucalyptus. Um, I'm gonna do something like that, but I think this looks really cool. It's super easy and cheap to make and it looks pretty high end. Mm -hmm. 